A golfer hits a shot to a green that is elevated three meters above the point where the ball is struck. The ball leaves the club at a speed of 14 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. It rises to its maximum height and then falls down to the green. Ignoring air resistance, find the speed of the ball just before it lands. So we are talking about projectile motion without air resistance. Taking into account the condition of the problem, we have these facts. Ball straw starts from this point. Let's say it is from the origin. Velocity r 40 degrees respect to the x-axis and magnitude of the velocity is 14 meters per second. We want the speed of the ball in this point. As you can see, the motion is two-dimensional and we know we can analyze it by two one-dimensional motions. That will be the motion along x-axis and the motion along y-axis. So, the goal is to find component of the velocity when the ball is here. When we find the values of, for these components, then it's trivial to calculate speed from them. The motion along y-axis is the motion under the influence of gravitational acceleration g. We will do this later. Right now, let's talk about the motion along x-axis. Uh, the motion along x-axis is the motion with the constant speed. It is represented by the blue vector. You can notice that the blue vector, or the x components of the instantaneous velocity, is always the same as it should be. Do we know this x component? Yes, we do. It is projection of the velocity to x axis, of course, and it's always the same. And yes, we can calculate it using this equation. Please look at the video where the projection of the vectors are explained. From this equation, we see that uh, the Vx we want to know is equal to projection of the velocity V0 to x-axis. And it is equal to the magnitude of V0 times cosine alpha, or the angle between velocity and positive part of the x-axis. The angle and the magnitude are known, so it's a matter of calculations to find the Vx. So, one part is finished, over. Um, and now we are going to find Vy. Before we do this, I want to show you something else. I want to calculate Vy here in this point, and then to compare with Vy here, where we actually want it to be. Here, it's the same height as here, and it is 3 meters above the x-axis. Using one of the kinematic equation, for the accelera accelerated motion, we will have that Vy squared 
is v zero y squared minus two g y. Minus is because the ball is moving up and acceleration is pointing down. So the ball is slowing down, of course. Uh, y is the height on the end uh, v zero y is the y component of the initial velocity and the y component of the initial velocity is equal to magnitude of the initial velocity times sinus alpha again <clears throat> we have everything we need and we can calculate vy so now we have vx and vy and we can calculate the speed in this point here and it is given by this here so v is equal to square root of vx square plus vy square and it is equal to 11.7 meters per second okay now let's go and find the speed of the ball right here first vx is always the same the only thing we want to find is vy again we will use the same equation as before but we will have different ingredients of course so why it's obvious that in this case we observe the motion from here to here but looking only here actually looking at the motion along y-axis we can see that it's, it's it looks like a free fall motion <clears throat> and according to to this we need to find height here or the maximum height of the projectile we can find maximum height of the projectile if we take that in this point y component of the velocity is actually zero and eventually we will get that y max is four four point thirteen meters now we are able to find the length of the path from here to here and it is y max minus three meters of course it is 1.13 meters so again 1.13 meters is from <coughs> this point here to this point here again using the same equation and using the fact that vy is zero in the beginning of the motion we will have that Vy is 4.7 meters per second. Using the square root, we will have that the speed in this point here is 11.7 meters per second. So, it is obvious why am I calculate the speeds in those two points. It is because they are the same. So, I have some questions for you. Why the speeds in those two points are the same? Is it just coincidence for those two points? Or there are more points like this? Let's say twins points, where the speeds are the same. What about velocities in those points? Are they the same? Feel free to comment and give the answers to these questions.